This story contains mature subject matter, including references to sexual assault. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> On this edition of The Fifth Estate. He's a predator, and all predators do whatever they can to get what they need. No matter how much I tried to get people to support me in reporting him, nobody was listening. Police say former actor Nathan Chasing Horse played the role of a lifetime for sinister purposes. Mr. Chasing Horse represented himself as a medicine man. That means that he betrayed the trust of people who went to him in the first place. Our investigation uncovers the Canadian connection to this story, with multiple women in three provinces saying they too were assaulted by Chasing Horse. Did he sexually assault you? Yes. The number of victims, I believe, is a lot higher than what we're aware of at the moment. Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Why do you think he belongs in prison? Because he's a predator. I'm Mark Kelly. This is The Fifth Estate. This is Sutina Nation, southwest of Calgary. And there are secrets buried here. Secrets that are slowly starting to surface about the damage that was done when a medicine man came to town. I'm here to meet Marina Crane. She's an elder, an artist, and an activist, fighting against the abuse and exploitation of Indigenous women and girls. When we contacted her to discuss the medicine man, her reaction, what took you so long? The irony of it is like he's been existing here and yet, all the efforts to have somebody in authority see what he's doing, like it was a, a deaf ears. Years ago, she opened the door to the medicine man, thinking he could help people in Sutina heal. It's a decision that haunts her to this day. His impact exists everywhere. And I believe the reason for that is because of lost generations. I think because of so many Indigenous youth having been adopted, had been placed in foster home, that connection or disconnection to community, living in urban areas. Of course, it's a perfect hunting ground for someone who wants to manipulate people who don't know who they are. His name is Nathan Chasing Horse. This is one of his videos. His father claims Chasing Horse is the direct descendant of the fierce Lakota warrior Crazy Horse, and may be the fulfillment of an ancient Lakota prophecy, born with a sacred spirit, sent to heal Lakota people. He's the medicine man. Nathan Chasing Horse was just a teenager when he landed the role of a lifetime, playing a Lakota brave named Smiles A Lot in the Kevin Costner movie Dances With Wolves. And the Oscar goes to Dances With Wolves. The film won a staggering seven Academy Awards. It grossed more than $400 million, and according to Chasing Horse, it changed his life forever. Bearcoat was a friend of long-haired Custer. He comes for revenge. This is an excerpt from the movie Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee, shot in part in Sutina in 2006. Chasing Horse playing the role of a warrior fighting to protect his culture, a role he played when he was off the set in Sutina as well. At that time, I think what he brought was this idea of hope about identity. We're in a stage of where we're recovering from a lot of things, residential school. And we were just, well, who are we? You know, and this man come and say, well, this is who you are. You're this proud person. Chief Lee Crowchild believes in the healing powers of traditional ceremonies, similar to prayer rituals, helping indigenous people deal with the trauma of colonization and the struggle to reclaim their identity. Prayer is really important to keeping us, keeping us grounded to our identity of who we are. And in that prayer, we look, well, who, who can help us with that? And this is where medicine people come in. You know, some of them that can talk with spirit, some of those can actually deal with the emotional needs of, of people. 
Chasing Horse held traditional Lakota Uwipi ceremonies, summoning the spirits of the dead to answer people's prayers. It's held in complete darkness. And the person that's the medicine man, their hands are bound behind their back and they're wrapped in a blanket and everything. And, and they're laid in a place where they've prepared. And then they turn off all the lights and then you have singers that'll sing the songs because there's songs attached with that. And then pretty soon you hear rattles, but then you see lights flickering all over the place. And then you hear other voices. When you turn on the lights, there's the medicine man standing there. All the rope is in a ball and the, and the blanket's all folded up. Everything, but he's just standing there. Once the medicine man is tied, according to Crowchild, the spirits are released to help the person in the ceremony. That's the power of the medicine man. And with these ceremonies, Chasing Horse started to build a cult of personality. This was my stomping ground a few years back. Lots of changes. Pamela Bird quickly became a believer. She hasn't been back to Sutina in years. She met Nathan Chasing Horse here, and her life has never been the same. But do you think the fact that you spent time with Nathan Chasing Horse in the circle, do you think that that also yeah. has made, made you an outcast here? Absolutely, yes. The circle was the name of those who believed, revered, and supported Nathan Chasing Horse. Pamela Bird spent 13 years in the circle She's never shared her story publicly before. Uh, just trying to compose myself, try not to be overwhelmed by, by memories. Are the memories hard to hold? Mm -hmm. I guess when I, I think about it, yeah, it's really hard to hold. But when I think about it, it's, um, it's voicing it, having the courage to do that. Pamela remembers attending a Uwipi ceremony given by Chasing Horse. She'd recently remarried and hoped the medicine man could strengthen the bond. You know, rattles, lights, and this beautiful show that I just, you know, your heart, when you don't come from ceremony, you don't come from uh, a traditional background or no one's ever shown you, I'm just like this non-native, wow, looking at everything, just amazed by it. How beautiful. I want to be a part of this. Pamela says there was also a dark side. She says she lived in fear Chasing Horse could unleash spirits to hurt her if she didn't serve the needs of the medicine man and his family. Do you think he played on your vulnerabilities? Hell yeah. Yes. 100% he did. Like, a, like an energy vampire, feeding off of everybody's energy. And he, meaning Nathan Chasing Horse, he put a lot of fear in me, a lot of fear that <clears throat> behind closed doors, I would just be so enraged by the control that I allowed them all to have because I had so much fear when I look back at it now. While Pamela feared the power Chasing Horse had over her to control her, Marina Crane had a very different reaction. She suspected he was just playing a part. The medicine man, just an act. So when he comes in saying, oh, I do sweats and Sundance, I was skeptical, only because I'd known the history of my own family and how they practice sweats and Sundance. Did you have that impression that this was more of a performance than, than anything, the ceremony from Nathan Chasing Horse? Well, I just, like, I, I, I it was like, um, Watching a movie, you know, a TV show, you're standing there and you're watching everybody participating. What is the secret to your success? And he played that role really good. Chief Lee Crowchild suspected something even darker. Do you participate in any ceremony with him? I went to one ceremony with him. My cousin invited me and says, okay, I'll, I'll go listen. But there was something that was kind of different and I mean, I had no way of proving, but I said, no, I'm kind of going to step back from this, only just because of my own skepticism, I think. What were you skeptical of? I think at that time, I was, I was a little bit protective of my, my 
daughters, as they're young and they're impressionable, or that age when, when young women are impressionable. You know, um, protective of, of what? Of being preyed upon. When we come back, women break their silence. If you tell someone you're a medicine person and that person is in a vulnerable state, anything you say is law, basically. And do you think he took advantage of that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Nathan Chasing Horse is an actor, a self-proclaimed medicine man and a tireless self-promoter. This is one of his many videos posted on his YouTube channel. Las Vegas police allege he's the leader of a cult called The Circle, a tight-knit group there to serve Chasing Horse, feed his lifestyle. Pamela Bird was one of them. Why do you think Nathan Chasing Horse was trying to draw you into The Circle? Because I would give everything that I could possibly give to make sure that they were okay. I'm that kind of person. If you're broken and hurt, I'll come and I'll try my best to make you feel better. And what Chasing Horse needed was money to keep him, his wives and his helpers on the road for their traveling healing ceremonies. Here's a family photo of his entourage, Chasing Horse with his parents and six women he called his wives, a symbol of his status. Chasing Horse dismissed those who criticized his lifestyle in a 2010 radio interview. So now we have a lot of gossip, rumors, jealousy, envy, hatred, you know, insecurity. And it takes our people away from the beauty that our people had once long ago, you know. And uh, so I, I see that all over, everywhere I go, a lot of uh, meanness. So it's sad. So he always says that people are really jealous. They're really jealous. And these things that they want to, um, that they, they want it, you know, and they're jealous of me. There's only one person like me in this entire world. And where I am right now, I'm thinking, thank God, you know. But back then, he made it sound like he's a savior. Like, you know, this anti whatever, you know, this uh, something coming to save and change everybody and save the world. And because I didn't know any better, I believed him. So this was the school then where you first laid eyes on Nathan Chasing Horse? Yeah, it was actually in this round building right here. Yeah. See that little round part there, the long skinny window? Oh yeah. Yeah, it was actually in there. And he was, this is actually a prayer room where we pray. Nicole Baycrow says she was in grade nine here in Sutina when she joined students in the school prayer room to listen to Chasing Horse. So you, it's a you and a group of other students in that yeah, room? Yeah, and it was mostly girls. There's probably like, three boys, right on this right side too, right where that window is. Mm -hmm. That's where the boys were. And then the girls were all on that side. And that's the time you noticed that he was noticing you. Yeah, he just, just kept staring at all of us and you know, talking and... Nicole remembers attending a healing ceremony at her aunt's house given by Chasing Horse. I was interested in more ceremonies and sweats. I, you know, I was proud of my culture. Mm -hmm. So I asked him if he had any more sweats that he was doing and he said yes and he said give me a call and I got his number. Did you That's think... how it started. So he gave you his number and said call me? Yes and I did text him and then he said that he'd take me and I told my mom she said it was okay. I remember him pulling up to the house and Nicole just jumped in, sweet little girl, innocent, you know, and playfully, you know, just touching his things like they were, like they knew each other really close. 
and uh, he, I just, they pull, he pulled up and said hi, took Nikki, and they left. And then um, they said they were going back to the ceremony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have any concerns? Uh, no, I trusted him because, like we said, he's a medicine man, right? Well, he claimed to have been, so I had my faith in that. We drove away, and where he was supposed to go, he didn't go left, he went right. So where did he take you? There was like this little trailer, and he went back there, and then that's the first spot that some happened to me there with him. I didn't know how to say no, I didn't know how to stop it, I just... And you were 15? I was only 15, yeah. But then a few days after that, I noticed her kind of just clam up and she didn't talk to me about anything. And what was your mother's instinct telling um, you? I, I, I just felt like there's something wrong with her and I tried talking to her and she wouldn't say anything. She just, she, I didn't even know about what happened until uh, maybe a year later. Mm -hmm. And then she told me. Nicole says she was sexually assaulted three times by Chasing Horse, and those ceremonies she thought would help her heal only deepened her wounds. Like, I was always proud to be Indigenous, but with, like, ceremonial stuff, I was kind of ashamed of it because of him. Just brought back bad memories for you. Mm hmm Yeah, I was... I don't like it. I couldn't do it. Because... It's a shame because it's our culture. Sorry. She told me that um, they went and uh, he drove her to an isolated place uh, and he, I guess, he assaulted her there. And then I freaked out and I told <clears throat> my husband at the time. And then he's the one that suggested that we go to the police. Sutina has its own police force. In 2009, Nicole's stepfather was an officer. To avoid any conflict, he couldn't be involved in the investigation. So Nicole gave a statement to another officer. So you've gone to the police, then what happened? Nothing, because there's not enough evidence. Because the officer that asked me asked if I had any used clothing from the times. And I said, no, they're already like washed, it was too late. Not enough evidence for them. How did that make you feel? Just defeated, I guess. Like, so I'm more ashamed of anything. Nicole's story may have been one of the first lost opportunities to investigate Chasing Horse, but it wouldn't be the last. During this period, Chasing Horse was traveling to multiple communities on the powwow circuit, celebrations of indigenous culture. The Fifth Estate scoured records of powwows that Chasing Horse attended in the years after Nicole Big Crow went to police. From the U.S. Southwest up into Canada, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and B.C., Tala Tatusis met him at a powwow in Saskatchewan. There's always this, oh, he follows the old ways, and he's a medicine man, and He's also a movie star, and it was all very peculiar considering the fact that most medicine people are quite humble, quiet to themselves, and hidden. You mentioned that he had the, the star power of his celebrity, but for you, with the role of a medicine man, what, what, does, what does that mean? What does that represent? If you tell someone you're a medicine person, and that person is in a vulnerable state, maybe they're displaced, maybe they don't know a lot about culture, immediately you're in a trustworthy, authoritative position. Anything you say is law, basically. And do you think he took advantage of that? Absolutely, absolutely. I think that was his major MO. Tala later posted this picture. She commented, me and Nate, best friends forever, and sweetest man I ever met. Those words would come back to haunt her. Tala would meet Chasing Horse again and again at powwows and ceremonies surrounded by his wives. Tala was 28 years old, a struggling single mom, 
and he took notice. So then all of a sudden, there comes this medicine man who's sweet and kind and flirty, and I was like, I don't know if this is okay. Like, I don't know what's, what's happening. This is different. Is this good? Like, and I started, I need to tell someone to know if this is okay. So I told a couple friends, and they're like, oh my God, it's Nathan Chasing Horse, though. Like, oh my God, what if you're the next wife? Tala eventually became a member of the circle, which she felt was an act of cultural devotion. But she says Chasing Horse wanted something in return. We had to give him money on the 8th of every month, and he called it filling the pipe, P-I-P-E, like the word. And we would send money to him because he felt like he needed to be taken care of. I'm a medicine man, I need to be taken care of. He didn't work, he didn't do anything. He had a Black Hills gold ring on every single finger. Those are expensive rings. He had a big, huge black truck and a seven seat, I think, armada for the wives and a trailer. And they always had the best of everything. And they always had big, huge hotels. Some members of the circle were told a different story. Chasing Horse said his was a life of sacrifice as he and his wives traveled the powwow trail. I thought, oh, look it. And if that's what they, if that's what they live on, then maybe we should just give a little bit more. It got to the point where I gave him a couple of cars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands of dollars? Yeah, and I would give all of it. I suffer, but I feel, I felt like, like I put myself in this place where I guess I'm supposed to suffer. No, I'm not supposed to. When you were giving Nathan Chasing Horse for the circle hundreds of thousands of dollars, how were you living? Poor. Poor, and went on the words of him saying, you know, you'll always be taken care of, always. And I wasn't. They just will take, take, take until they can't take anymore. But there was a gathering storm around Chasing Horse, whispers of sexual assaults turning into a screaming chorus. And before long, authorities would start to take notice. When we come back. Do you think that Nathan Chasing Horse was using the power and the, the prestige of being a medicine man to exploit young girls in this community? Most definitely. He's a predator. And all predators do whatever they can to get what they need. Of patience. Jason Smith never felt he had to search for his indigenous identity. He's a member of the Chippewas of the Thames First Nation near London, Ontario. He likes to say even before he learned how to walk, he was dancing in powwows. His life defined by powwow culture. It allowed me to be involved in my culture, learn the teachings, learn the celebration of life. That's basically what powwow is, you know, it's a celebration of life. Jason's powwow family grew when his son Justice was born. Soon a champion dancer, the pride of his father. Oh, he changed my life. I had him at a young age. I was 18, mom was 17. I was on a path of no good and uh, you know, it was either time to step up or step out and I chose to step up and you know, he changed my life for the better. It allowed me to get back to my roots. Um, it allowed me to teach him uh, powwow of uh, what I was taught, so I was able to pass that down to him. But that idyllic life took a tragic turn when Justice was diagnosed with leukemia. He was just 13. And it was, it was devastating. Um, I was just like, at the time I was in shock and I was just looking at mom and, um, and Justice and you know, they broke down instantly. You know, his, his first thought was like, am I gonna die, you know? Uh, so that was hard. You were prepared to do yeah, anything and yeah, everything yeah. to save him. Yeah, anything. This is Justice after months of punishing chemotherapy. At 15, he told his dad he couldn't do it anymore. Instead, he asked to be healed by a medicine man. 
Jason was put in touch with Nathan Chasing Horse. So as you, you're reaching out, you're, you're exchanging texts, you're making plans, yeah. but what did you know about this guy? I had known nothing. Uh, we were putting our full faith into, you know, again, the culture. Um, just trusting in that process. What did you believe at the time? From what we were told, we believed that he could help my son, uh, help our son, and, um, you know, heal him from his sickness, from his illness. We're in Sarnia. Yeah, we're just getting to the Sarnia border and um, we're gonna hopefully get across. So we want everybody to uh, keep their fingers crossed for us. <laughs> it was 2020 and Jason and Justice were on the road to see Chasing Horse at his home in Las Vegas. Jason was putting his son's life in the hands of a medicine man. What Jason didn't know was Chasing Horse's name and reputation were under attack and had been for years. And the allegations involving him were deeply disturbing. Marina Crane, an elder in Sutina, led the charge. She wrote this blog titled, I Finally Spoke to Her, about her niece Roberta's relationship with Chasing Horse. This was in 2011. About four years ago, a holy man, or so his followers called him, came into my community. She told me this man, I will call him NCH, slept with her. She was 15 at the time. My stepniece said he told her he loved her and that he didn't have sex with his other girlfriends because he only had sex with her. It gets worse. He also had sex with three other 15-year-olds. Marina felt responsible for welcoming what she called a predator into the community, who then charged $5,000 a ceremony. I was basically booking Nathan for these ceremonies. So when, when all this was happening, I had to put my foot down within the community and saying, no, I don't support him. You said you felt responsible. No matter how much I tried to get people to support me in reporting him, mm -hmm. And, and as, as much as I wanted people to understand, like, like my niece really had some problems, nobody was listening. In your blog, you would eventually refer to Nathan as a, as a plastic medicine man. Yes, and, and the irony of it is like, is like, even though I'm trying to talk to people about, about him being false, nobody, nobody would listen. In 2015, a woman in Arizona posted a warning about Chasing Horse after she says her daughter almost died from an ectopic pregnancy. This pregnancy was a result of spiritual abuse, sexual coercion. She was told spirits said she had to be with the medicine man, a spiritual uncle, and to keep it secret. We found several posts accusing Chasing Horse of sexual and financial improprieties, some anonymous. This one from Twilight actor Chesky Spencer. He distanced himself from Chasing Horse after hearing about the allegations of spiritual and sexual abuse and after being constantly hounded for money. Also in 2015, the Fort Peck Indian Reservation in Montana voted to banish Nathan Chasing Horse from their territory. The Fort Peck Journal cited the ban was based on allegations of human trafficking, drug dealing, spiritual abuse, and intimidation of tribal members. The allegations dated back to 2005. Back in Sutina, once again in 2015, the Ban Council acted. The Sutina Nation passed a resolution banning Nathan Chasing Horse from the community, stating he was a danger to people here. Talatatusis felt Chasing Horse was a danger too, she says she was sexually assaulted by him. She told her story to a chief from the Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations. I had been sexually abused as a child and I had gotten therapy for that. So I knew that there was a power and control dynamic with abusers. I went to the Sexual Assault Therapy Center in Saskatoon to get therapy because I was just... <laughs> because of him? Because I was of... so broken. I was so angry. I still carry a lot of the rage that from what happened because like like how dare you take something so sacred from me did you ever go to the police with your own story 
Yep, I made a report to the FSIN, and then he told me to go to the cops, so I did. And I told them at the front, I need to make, I want to charge someone for sexual assault. Sure, here's a piece of paper, go sit down and write it all down, someone will give you a call. That was it. Nobody called. Tala's complaint prompted the FSIN to ban chasing horse from powwows in the province. Again, all of this happened back in 2015. Fast forward to 2020, and Jason Smith was in Las Vegas with his 15-year-old son, Justice, sick with leukemia, with faith that Chasing Horse could save him. This is Justice on a good day. Chasing Horse was treating him with herbal remedies and healing ceremonies. Jason says he spent more than $100,000, some raised through crowdfunding, money for the trips there, hospital visits and offerings to Chasing Horse and the Circle. After a few months, justice started to fade, so Jason confronted Chasing Horse. I was like, uh, I gotta ask you something, you know, and I want you to be straight up with me. I was like, uh, is this working? You know, is this working? I need to know if it's working or not. His response was a threat, so he threatened me. So he basically told me, why am I questioning him? And, you know, do you want me to take the sickness out of your son and put it in you? And it just kind of like, it took me back, right? Um, he threatened to give you... He threatened to give it to me. Yep. The cancer to you. Yep, yep. And I said, well, if you can't do it, then, uh, then I'll take it. I would, I will, if you can sit here and tell me that you're not, you know, you can't do what you said you were going to do, I will take that for my son. Justice's health quickly deteriorated, and four months after Jason put his son's life in the hands of Nathan Chasing Horse, Justice took his last breath. And uh, I said, don't, don't leave, son, you know, come back. And his eyes kept rolling, and he was just looking at me, and I was just doing CPR. I said, come on, son, you know. Uh -huh. I couldn't save him. Day of my life. Jason had put his faith, his trust, his belief in the medicine man, and he paid the ultimate price for that. As we sit here, do you believe he's a healer or do you believe he's a phony? I think he's a phony. Uh, he played on us, you know, he played on our vulnerability. Not once did he say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. You know, if, if there was a point in time even in the beginning or after the first ceremony, we could have come back home, regroup, tried something else. We never had that opportunity. So I understand you still believe in the power of a medicine man, but you don't believe that Nathan was a um, real medicine man. Never lost my faith in my culture. I still very much believe in it, but I definitely don't believe in Nathan. Our investigation revealed how that faith was manipulated. A man who left his inner circle told us how helpers would shake rattles and bang walls during ceremonies, pretending to be the spirit's chasing horse claimed he was awakening. It was, in the end, an act. Police in Sin City were now closing in, and an arrest was imminent. When we come back... Let me ask you, you're back in Canada and you hear about Nathan chasing horse being arrested. How did that sit with you? Checkmate. I hope you never come out. Here in Sutina Nation, news quickly spread about Nathan chasing horse's arrest in Las Vegas last January. Nathan Chasing Horse, known for his role as Smiles A Lot in the Oscar-winning movie, is facing several serious charges, including sexual assault and trafficking. So Nathan Nathan police... Chasing Horse's home was the culmination of a months-long investigation from federal, local, and tribal officials. While he is behind bars right now, police experts now like... Say Chasing Horse abused his power and spiritual influence as a medicine man to groom indigenous girls and women for sex, all under what they described as a cult called the circle in this arrest report. You hear about Nathan chasing horse being arrested. How did that sit with you? 
My smile tells it all. They're really happy. Really happy. Can I have a minute? Yeah, of course. <laughs> because I, of the trauma that I endured and the women that I called my sisters. Checkmate. I hope you never come out. Why do you think he belongs in prison? Because he's a predator. In a Las Vegas courtroom, Chasing Horse stood in the prisoner's box, handcuffed and humbled, facing 19 charges, including 10 counts of sexual assault with a minor under the age of 16, six counts of sexual assault, one count of kidnapping a minor. Two women filed complaints, including one of its so-called wives. She alleges she was 14 years old when Chasing Horse first sexually assaulted her. How do you plead to the 19 charges contained in that indictment. Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. I will enter a not guilty plea on your behalf. The 61-page report from the Las Vegas police outlines the grounds for his arrest, alleging he groomed young girls, sexually assaulted them, forced them to have sex with other men, and recorded the assaults on his cell phone. The report also claims Chasing Horse instructed his wives to swallow suicide pills in the event police ever came for him. In court, his defense lawyer says the sex was consensual. Sex for a transactional purpose is not sex assault. I'm asking the court to dismiss the entire indictment. I'm a little offended at calling CCH's um, sexual abuse at the hands of this man transactional. Uh, <laughs> So she's taken there at 14 because her mom is ill and told that her virginity is the only pure part of her left and she has to sacrifice this to maintain her mom's health and to gloss over that by calling it transactional and there's no proof of non-consent. Um, <laughs> Well, it, that's taken a lot of license. The Fifth Estate made repeated attempts to contact Chasing Horse and his lawyer for comment. Our request went unanswered, but his trial is now on hold. Chasing Horse filed an appeal to the Nevada Supreme Court to have the case against him dismissed, but the charges against him continue to grow. The FBI charged him with sexual exploitation and possession of child pornography, and the Fort Peck Tribal Court issued a warrant for his arrest for sexual assault of a child. The RCMP in Carameos, BC, have filed an historic sexual assault charge against Chasing Horse as well. And back in Sutina, police said three women have now come forward to allege Chasing Horse had sexually assaulted them too. Mr. Chasing Horse represented himself as a medicine man. That means that he betrayed the trust of people who went to him in the first place. Mike Cavilla is an investigator with the Sutina Police Force, a veteran of decades of policing in Calgary. When Nathan Chasing Horse came along and then was arrested down in Las Vegas, what happened was we were privy to a number of files across both Canada and the U.S where we were able to bring the agencies together, compare notes, and corroborate information. And so then you have a landslide of charges. So here's my question. Why didn't that happen before? Probably lack of communication between police agencies, I would imagine. One of the women who filed charges, Nicole Bigcrow, repeating her allegations against Chasing Horse, first told to Sutina Police back in 2009. I can't speak for the investigators back then. I'm not exactly sure what was done to investigate that complaint. Um, but what I can tell you is that there, there are, uh, you know, similar type complaints right across BC, Alberta, and uh, Saskatchewan, where uh, single complainants have come forward over the years, and then those uh, files have sat dormant, uh, gone cold, if you will. So, and why do they sit dormant? Well, a lot of the times it's because uh, police have to corroborate the information. And so um, when it's a he said, she said type situation, 
uh, and there's no other corroborating evidence. Uh, sometimes um, police investigators are hesitant to pursue a charge with the Crown. So, but, but you realize it, the possible impact of that, that there could be uh, a predator who is allowed to, to, to stay on the loose. 100%. And uh, certainly I don't condone that, uh, but I, I'm just offering you perhaps a reason for, for why that might have happened. For Nicole, the charges come too late. The damage to her, she says, is already done. He dropped out. What grade were you in? I was only in grade 10. And you think that all of that stems from Nathan chasing horse? Yeah, he ruined my, he, ru he ruined my life. I wish I knew better, but. But yeah, he, he ruined my life here. This is where I'm supposed to be safe. I'm supposed to graduate, I'm supposed to have education. But instead I got, nobody understood what I was going through. For Marina Crane, this feels like a Me Too movement for indigenous women but it won't help her niece, Roberta. Marina says Chasing Horse sexually abused Roberta when she was just 15. She died of an overdose in 2021. Well, she's gone now, so... But her life did mean something. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. Like these young women, they were just children. They were girls, they were babies. Like that's how, that's like, it's uh, uncomprehensible. I, I can't even comprehend that. There are young women like this who can advocate and say that, you know, we're, we're gonna stop this, this isn't right. I mean, really, imagine these young women, what they've done and it, I mean, I don't even think they realize how many young women they're helping. Because women my age and older and even older had no voice. So thank you for airing that. So that way at least people would know it's about time.